feet shouting at the top of his voice. I mean, this man was very troubled. And he says, what do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? <laughs> I beseech you, I beg you, do not torture me. <laughs> crazy demon. Right? We have no idea. We're reading this. We're like, that's crazy. Why is he saying that? Because we have no idea about the spiritual world. But when we study the Bible, we begin to understand a little more then we understand why he's so troubled. Because he already knows what Jesus is about to do. And we read it and we have no idea. And it says here, For Jesus had commanded the evil spirit to come out of the man. Many times he had seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Now please notice verse 28 and try to stay awake. Coming out of the man uh, was considered a torture by this demon, right? Notice verse 28. <clears throat> Jesus asked him, what is your name? And he answers, legion, because many demons had gone into this man. And they, now he goes from singular to plural, they begged him repeatedly. The Bible is not even recording all the times they begged him. Repeatedly not to order them to go into the where? Oh, wow. Not to go into the abyss. And a large herd of pig was feeding on the hillside and the demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs. And he gave them permission. The demons told Jesus, don't torture us. Because they knew the moment they left the man, they were headed to the abyss. Demons begged Jesus permission to go into the pigs because even the body of a pig is better than the abyss. It must be a very difficult situation to be in the abyss. Because even a pig's body is better than the abyss. Now, in order for you to understand what the abyss is, I'm going to, to ask you a question, a couple questions. Can demons be seen or touched? No. They can, I mean, we cannot see angels. They cannot see, be seen or touched because they're spiritual. The Bible says... Know you not that they're spirits, you know, the God's angels are spirits working to, to save to in the salvation of the people of God. So of, on, on, by default, the demonic angels are spirits working to take away people's salvation. Now, because angels are spirits and spirits live in the spiritual realm, they cannot be seen. Now, can a demon that has possessed a body be seen and touched absolutely why because the demon has temporarily gained access to a body which is a physical entity a body that can be seen felt and touched so what is the abyss please listen very carefully the abyss is not a physical geographic location but rather a state of bodilessness in which demons cannot be seen, felt, or touched. And in other words, they are confined to the spiritual realm where there is no part of anything under the sun. They cannot get a tan. They cannot eat. They cannot enjoy the pleasures of being under the sun. But the moment they gain access to a body, you bet they enjoy everything the man enjoys. Or the woman. Even the pig is better. Now the pig is still grazing there. I, I'll take some of that before I have no body at all and I'm confined to a state of bodilessness where I have no part of anything under the sun. To be in the abyss simply means that demons do not have a physical body, therefore they cannot be seen, felt, or touched. 
a bodiless state or condition, if you please. Very simple. Very simple. Satan is in the abyss. He cannot be seen. When he is allowed to put a body, all of a sudden he can be seen. And this is why in the second coming, he is destroyed. The body that he gains is destroyed. Remember the Bible says, Revelation 19, 19 to 21, through 21, that body is destroyed at the second coming, but he, then he goes into the abyss again. And that's why the angel puts the chain on him and sends him back into the abyss, Revelation 20. So what happens, in other words, when he removes the body at the second coming, he kills it. Then now he goes back into the abyss, not having a body. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Next. This is why demons told Jesus, the demons told Jesus, since you are ordering us out of this man's body, please at least let us go into the swine, because even the body of a pig is better than not having a body at all. Pigs have part in the physical world. Spirits do not. <clears throat> Any questions? <clears throat> People have seances and they see these images. Those are spirits. Aren't Correct. They seem to have a body. That's right. Well, they, they see. They can, pers they can personate a person to, to give you sort of a a, a, a see-through image that is really not a body, but it's a it's an impression of an image. They have that capability, but is a it, nevertheless it's still a spirit. You cannot kick a can down the street. It needs a body to do it, brother. Also, the fact that um, the disciples doubted when they saw Jesus <coughs> resurrected, and Jesus said, "Touch me and see that I'm." I am flesh and bones. That's right. Um, just to see that he was not a holographic um, hallucination. Right. I was thinking about that passage. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And this is why he made certain I am flesh and bones. I am not just a ghost that you're thinking you're seeing. Okay, so now it's very clear. You know, you know, some people try to make the hell out of the abyss. <coughs> And hell is not a geographic location. Hell is going to burn at the second, begin burning at the second coming and end at the, after the millennium. But it, it is not a geographic location today. And some people, when they do not understand, they try to make up stories. But we, by comparing the Bible, it's very simple to see it. And you will see this towards the end when I use more verses. Okay? Now, with this in mind, please notice what happens on the fifth trumpet once again <clears throat> the fifth angel sounded his trumpet and i saw a star named lucifer that had fallen from the sky to the earth the star lucifer was given the key or permission to the shaft of the abyss what do you think satan will do with the key when he's given the key which gives permission to open come out of the abyss. Let's look at the next verse. The Bible says, he, when he opened, of course he's going to open, if he's given the key, the permission. So Lucifer will open the abyss, it means that he will no longer be bound by a state of bodilessness. He will not be allowed to put on a, he will be allowed to put on a physical body that can, just like a pig, that can be seen by human eyes. Very clearly. And the Bible says, when he opened the abyss, smoke rose like it, from it, like the smoke from a giant furnace. I'll talk about this giant furnace a little bit more to you guys later. The sun and the sky, as a result, when he came out and he broke into the from the spiritual world into the physical world that he was seen with 200 million angels. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. Revelation 9, verse 16. When he broke through the result, when he appeared on the cloud, remember how he comes down upon the earth? The Bible says the result was the sun and the sky were what? Darkened. I mean, when six, 
20, 200 million 16 feet tall beings with wings that are 16 feet tall each, but they're flying and moving them up in the air right in front of the sun. Don't you think it's going to cause darkness temporarily from blocking the sun and blocking the light? Well, that's exactly what the Bible says. But the smoke from the abyss. And it says that out of the smoke, locusts came down upon the earth and were given power like that of a scorpion of the earth. So they showed up because God, God's cup of grace have been filled. And then I'm going to show you this in a second. The world refused to hear the message, pure gospel from the 144,000. And because they refuse, God does what? He sends them a destroyer because their cup is filled. And this is by Paul. It's called the great... Um, a rebellion okay I'll show you that in a second so you notice the direction and there were so many that they darkened the sky now please notice the size of the army Revelation 9 16 the number of the mountain troops were 200 million and I heard their number John saw this in vision so if you still have any doubts about the nature of this army of locusts notice who their leader is Notice what the Bible says, Revelation 9, 11. They, speaking of the locusts, which you know it's an army, which you know it's a numberless army. By human eyes, you cannot number them. But the angels can number them. God can number them. They had a king over them. And Proverbs says, locusts have no king. Literal locusts have no king. Proverbs says. So this is not literal locusts. This is, we're talking about a symbol here. An analogous language. They had a king over them, the angel. Wow, he's called an angel. Now the fallen star that was it's that is called an angel now. How how sweet is that from God? Gives us a perfect clue. It says, now they had a king over them, the angel. Where did he come from? How can we say that an angel, a fallen star, is Islam? I ask you. And it says, they had the king over them, the angel of the abyss, whose name in Greek is Ab Abaddon, and in the Greek is Apollyon. In both language, Hebrew and Greek, the meaning is the same, destroyer. Because Satan is destroyer. The Bible says he comes but to kill and to destroy, right? Jesus says, and he's a destroyer from the beginning. So, he is the destroyer. I mean, it's so simple. So we have a king who is also a fallen star or an, now that is identified as angel and he is known, known as a destroyer. How simple is this? He doesn't leave any doubts. But if this is not perhaps, but that's not, uh, that's not it. Perhaps the biggest clue is that the Bible actually, the Bible actually tells us this fallen angel's name. Can you believe it? Notice. Notice the Bible says, notice what the Bible says is what's going to happen at the second coming. Revelation 20 verses 1 to 3. And I saw an angel, this is not Lucifer, this is an angel from God. And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key. Remember the key that was given to, to the Satan and Lucifer at the second coming? I mean at the fifth trumpet. And he opened the shaft of the abyss and he got out. Now that key... This angel that comes up from, the, from heaven, having the key to the abyss, the same abyss that he came out, and holding in his hands a great chain. He, this angel from heaven, sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil. Satan is his name. And bound him for a thousand years, and he, the angel, threw Satan into the abyss once again at the second coming so the Bible is letting us know in this passage that this fallen angel called Satan is the angel of the abyss not only that but the Bible also lets us know that when Satan the Bible also lets us know that at the second coming Satan will be out of the abyss 
The question I have for you is when did he get out? When was he released? Because you cannot. Notice, he threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed over him and kept him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended. Then he comes out again. After that, he must be set free for a short time. So notice, in order for something to be possibly thrown into, that something must be out of. Right? <clears throat> you cannot throw Satan into unless he's out of. So when is Satan released from the abyss? That means he's going to be physically seen. When it, the only place in the whole Bible is on the fifth trumpet that they have thrown that in the past and say that's no important. Discarded as fulfilled prophecies, Muslims, Islam, the rise of Islam. That's what, that's what tradition defends, yes. But not what the Bible says. Now the question is that, I said, when does he get out? Well, Revelation 9 is the only place. So, at the fifth trumpet, Satan will be allowed to put on a body. I, I'm not going to confuse you with this, but later on when we're talking about the appearance of Satan again as the second beast in Revelation uh, 13 verses 11 through 18 I'm going to show you how he is destroyed that body remember the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians the man has seen his body is destroyed by the brightness of his coming well and then the Bible says he's, that body is destroyed into the hellfire into the lake of fire then he goes that's the meaning that he goes because the body he receives is a temporary body that is destroyed now he is, can be seen again. He is back in the abyss. That's the meaning of the verse in Revelation 20 we just read. Got it? 